Hi guys and welcome back to Caterpillar Cross Stitch. In this week's video I'm going to show you exactly how you can follow a cross stitch pattern to complete your finished project. If you're a complete beginner to cross stitch then do not worry, I'm here to demonstrate on a step by step basis exactly how you two can easily follow the pattern and get cross stitching today. If you're new around here, then hi, I'm Sally. I am the owner and designer at Caterpillar Cross Stitch. We are a modern e-commerce cross stitch brand and we create helpful, interesting, entertaining cross stitch related videos here on YouTube every week or two to help you along your journey. I would absolutely love to have you join this amazing community. So please do consider subscribing by hitting the button down below. Also, check out the description box where you can join our VIP Stitch Club and get 10% off your first ever order and also download a free ebook of seven cross stitch patterns to get you started. So step one is to check out your pattern. You might have downloaded a PDF pattern, so either using that on a digital device or print that off, or if you received one of our full kits, you will receive printed patterns in there. In our full kit patterns, we have colour blocks and also symbols on top as well. In some digital patterns, and again, depending on the designer or the brand, those might be black and white symbols. Step two is to correspond to this printed pattern with the key that is also included with the kit or pattern itself. The key will generally be a table, often numbered, it will have the brand of the thread, it will have the code, for the thread, sometimes the name as well for that particular colour and sometimes it will have the length that you need of each individual colour. But most importantly, the key is going to show you which symbol correlates to which thread colour. It's really just like painting by numbers but with cotton. Be careful if the design itself uses a few different colours that are actually quite similar. Most of our designs use a maximum of 16 different thread shades, but depending on the designer, you could end up with 20, 30 or 40 different thread colors. And if it's a full coverage piece, there could be all different shades of the same type of color. So be really careful to make sure that they match up. If you do get one of the Caterpillar Cross Stitch full kits, then they will be numbered on the thread holder too. So it will be really easy to see exactly which thread colour correlates to which symbol by using the number. Step three is to check out the pattern because often there will be black arrows on the sides and the top. So these correlate to the often red lines, they're red lines on our designs with black arrows, they might be slightly different on other patterns, and the arrows basically are telling you where the centre point is going to be. So if you follow the horizontal and vertical red line where they lead together, that is the exact centre point of the pattern. Step four, grab your fabric, which might be Ada, it might be even weave or linen, and fold it in half and half again. Now look at that centre point of the fabric once you've unfolded it and match that up with the centre of the pattern. Also, don't forget to check the details either on the instructions or on the pattern itself that tell you whether the design is a perfect square, landscape or portrait. So make sure that you have your fabric the right way up or across. Some patterns, if they are small enough, the entire pattern will be printed just on one page of A4 paper. But depending on the size, some of ours are printed over two pages of A4 and with some designers, you could end up with 10 pages of pattern, depending on if you're stitching some huge projects. But with the Caterpillar Cross Stitch designs, they come either the entire piece is on one page of A4 or split over two. It's also important to match up those two pages if it is split. There might be some overlap. Normally, this would be two to three stitches worth of overlap and it would be indicated generally by that section being shaded out ever so slightly. So you don't want to repeat that section again. If you are following a printed black and white pattern, then you might want to use some type of a highlighter or other pen to indicate the stitches that you've already completed as you go. 
It will also depend on the quality of the printing. We don't want any smudged printing anywhere, but that's a really handy way to keep track of which sections you've stitched and where you're up to. Also when following a pattern, you might want to use a magnetic ruler or similar tool um, to mark off exactly where you are. This is particularly helpful if you're stitching a larger project and you just want to stitch a corner or a couple of inches at a time. Here you can see one of the Caterpillar Cross Stitch New Style Thread Holders which have all of the exact lengths that you're going to need wrapped around it perfectly. Each different thread colour is included in a different section and it's very clearly numbered. There's a hole as well to put the thread through and there's also a little slit to tuck those ends into to keep those nice and neat while you're stitching different colours. You can correspond the thread holder with the key in the instructions as well just to make it really clear for you exactly which colours relate to which symbols. At Caterpillar Cross Stitch we don't use any back stitch in the designs itself however many designers and brands do and generally speaking if there is back stitch to be included in the project this will be indicated by a simple thin line normally black. With all of our kits and PDF patterns you'll also receive full illustrated instructions which show you exactly how to get started cross stitching. We've also got quite a few tutorials here on our YouTube channel all about cross stitch for beginners which will literally walk you through threading the needle and placing that first stitch. Also coming up soon on the 31st of January we have our cross stitch school which is a four part video series. There is a free bookmark pattern uh, which is called bookworm so you'll receive the pattern for free, all of the details. If you do need any supplies as well you can get those from us on our website caterpillarcrossstitch.com but your best bet if you want to join in with that beginner cross stitch school series is to head to our description box down below and click that link where you can join the VIP Stitch Club and I will be emailing out to you all of the details that you need. So please do come back and check out part one on the 31st of January where our guest presenter Sean will be walking you through everything you need to know. The next thing to remember is that the finished size of your project will very much depend on the type of fabric that you choose. 14 count Ada is by far the most common fabric that people use and it's the one that I always recommend to beginners. It has a slightly larger grid and the stitches will be larger. It's not quite as fine, detailed or delicate but it's definitely the easiest to get started with. Of course you can also stitch on even weave fabric which is really soft, beautiful and delicate and we have those available in 28 count and 32 count. The main thing to remember is to start in the centre of the pattern and correspond that to the centre of the fabric. If you try to start at the top, bottom or one of the corners you might find unfortunately that after stitching for quite a while you end up that you started a bit too close to one of the edges and in fact you don't have enough fabric left. With all of the Caterpillar Cross Stitch kits we do include a really generous allowance around all of the edges for mounting, finishing off, turning your project into a cushion or whatever it might be but generally speaking the best place to start is in the centre and that way that you know without a shadow of a doubt that you will have enough left around all of the edges when you finish. When looking at a cross stitch pattern you might notice that on the paler coloured blocks representing the paler threads the symbol will be black but when the colour of the thread and therefore the block is a darker shade we actually change the symbol to be white so that it shows up a little bit easier but other than that there's no reason for it at all and it doesn't mean that you need to change anything follow the symbol to the letter or to the symbol and you won't be able to go wrong. The best thing to do when following the pattern is to stitch a block of that area of the same colour, the same symbols, as you go at one time. So if you have a piece of thread that is around 30 centimetres long, stitch all of the area of the same colour at one time and then when that is complete you might need more thread of the same colour but the best bet if you can is to stitch that section before changing on to another colour thread. You can work in vertical rows, horizontal rows 
or use a more traditional method and just stitch one cross stitch at a time. My advice would be to make sure that you're always stitching the same direction. So the bottom half stitch points in the same direction and as does the top stitch as well. That means that when you've finished your project, all of those stitches will be really neat, consistent, and when the light catches your project and the threads, it will mean that it just looks really uniform and beautiful. When it's time to move on to your next colour, simply look down your key, following your pattern, check out for that symbol, find the right thread, thread your needle, and off you go. I would recommend moving along from the section you've already completed and that way it's easier to count along, particularly if those sections are touching. I would probably avoid jumping around on the pattern too much or carrying those threads across where possible. So basically start in the centre and work your way outwards. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video on how to follow a cross stitch pattern. If you've got any questions for me at all, then please leave them down below. You can also get in touch by email, support at caterpillarcrossstitch.com. If you want to make sure to catch the next videos and most importantly, our upcoming cross stitch school, then please do hit the subscribe button and the bell and you'll be notified when those are available. Thank you for being here with me this week. Happy stitching and see you soon. Bye.